Hi, my name is Dan Vroman and I'm a pharmacist. I've been one for over 35 years and we can't continue with the present healthcare system we have. It's just unsustainable. If you look at all the statistics and the finances involved, you would come to that same conclusion. Uh, I've been dealing with patients who come to my pharmacy counter with prescriptions written by a doctor in good intention, only to find out that, that particular medication is not a particular insurance company's formulary. And the people are so frustrated because they don't want to be taking the medications to begin with, only to be told that the medication is not covered on a particular formulary. They want to throw the prescription in the air or throw it back at me. And a few decades ago, I used to be able to talk on behalf of the patients. I could call the insurance company directly for what's called prior authorization. Now that it's in the laps of the physicians and the physicians only, they don't even want to talk to the pharmacist. So I have to turn it over to another party who happens to be a doctor who doesn't have the time to really take to, to ask to ask for a particular prior authorization, but yet they're called on that and they're the only ones that can do it. My name is Kathy Sinclair and I'm a public health nurse. I know it well. Every month children are falling off of healthy families and not being renewed, which means that they are left with no health insurance. Now, this is a burden for the families and it's also a burden on the medical community because they have to be seen in emergency situations when they're not emergency situations. A single payer will provide consistent health care for children in the community. Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming. My name is Rachel Freeman and I'm a family medicine resident at Santa Rosa County Nursing. Getting our message across and remember this is where it's going to happen at the grassroots. Yes. As these people go by, we're changing some minds and we're informing some people and they're going to be curious. So we're doing our job. Uh, and all across Sonoma County, various other organizations doing similar things uh, all across the country. Hi, I'm Naomi Fuchs. I'm the CEO of Southwest Community Health Center, where we train these fabulous doctors. And I want to just ride the wave of their passion because, as you all know who know me, health care as a social justice issue is my passion. And I'm so glad to have you guys leading the charge and creating this community event. Martin Espinosa said, why do people care about this rally? They need to know that physicians and healthcare providers believe that the public option is the healthiest option right. for Woo! all of us. Yeah. So we need the public to know that your doctors and your future doctors care and want this plan for everyone to be available. Because the only way we'll get community health is to have health care for all. Just a quick poll. How many of the people here are physicians? Raise your hands. Yay, doctors. great privilege of working full-time as a faculty physician at the Santa Rosa Family Medicine Residency, where I have the honor and privilege of working with people like Dr. Veronica Jordan and Dr. Rachel Friedman, to whom we all owe a debt of gratitude. <laughs> to those people who think we don't need health reform or a public option, I say 47 million uninsured Americans is a national disgrace and an international embarrassment. To people who say that we can't afford it, I say we can't afford not to have it. A public citizenry that is healthy contributes to a healthy economy and the one trillion dollars over 10 years is 100 billion dollars a year which is six months of the Iraq war, which we did need to be in in the first place, and we did need to help health care for everybody in the first place. For those people who don't want public option because they think it's rationing, we already have rationing. Instead of rationing by the for-profit insurance companies, we want to get more health to the people. For people who are afraid of the government being involved, well, I am a little too, but they're already involved. <laughs> Medicare is the most successful government program and has gotten health care to people with disabilities and the elderly and physicians nationwide 
are taking care of these people. And VA. And the VA. Let's not forget the VA. Yeah. Thank you. And 50% of people in America now get their insurance through the government already. Yeah. Through government already. And the government insurances like Medicare already determine what the private insurances do. So we're already being affected by the government. Now we need to take advantage of it and make it work for the people. I should also remind us all that for those people who say that the cost is too high, more than one half of personal bankruptcies are related to inability to pay for your health or health insurance. That's a problem. For people who are promulgating and propagating issues about death panels and euthanasia, I say to them, liars! These are bald-faced lies promulgated and propagated by people who, in my opinion, are far more scary if they don't know the difference between Nazism and bringing health to the people than anything that they uh, rail against. Make it work. Make it happen. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Jeff Haney. I'm a physician at the Sutter Hospital in the Santa Rosa Family Medicine Residency Program. I'm actually the program director for the residency, um, responsible for guiding uh, family physician training here in Sonoma County um, and uh, trying to be uh, a person that offers the breadth of uh, medical training to all the residents here and the, the family physicians within this county. And one of the things that's exciting about the opportunity with healthcare reform is certainly a public option. And one of the things around the public option is the emphasis on primary care. And one of the questions that comes up frequently is what is the cost of health care reform? And the, the, the cost challenges are certainly understandable. Uh, the problem with our current structure is that the costs of health care escalate exponentially because we focus our um, care at the end of life or at the end of disease. And the reality is, is in order for us to have a rational and sane health care system, we need to focus our priorities early uh, in the context of health care, that we need to take care of uh, our kids, the five-year-olds, the ten-year-olds, and help prevent heart attacks 20 years down the road. The reason that health care reform is so unpalatable is in order to do that, we have to have a long-term vision. We have to be thinking about health care for 20 years, not quarterly, not fiscally in the context of a year, but 20 or 30 years down the road. It's difficult for politicians to think about that because uh, the cycle of their terms is short. It's a short period. And so uh, the likelihood that uh, their voters buy into money and cost savings for health care reform for 20 years is going to be very challenging, but we have to have the political will in order for us to actually have a sustainable health care system. I think the public option will allow us to have one of those uh, options that would allow us to move forward 20 years from now um, and it's something that's going to be painful to go through now and if we don't go through it now uh, 10 years from now it's going to be even more painful and it's something that we have to look at now and I appreciate um, uh, what Congress what Senate and what the, the president are trying to do and I would encourage them to continue thinking about uh, the public option as an option within our health care reform thank you